Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Um, uh, staying here, uh, during staying here, uh, I worked uh, on religious radicalism issues in Kazakhstan, and uh, I have finished uh, the policy paper. Uh, today, I would like to share some results of my research. Uh, particularly, I'll be talking about a connection between uh, violent extremism and uh, gang culture in Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, the problem of uh, gang and uh, extremism nexus is not uh, something specific uh, for Kazakhstan. Uh, a month ago, uh, the Washington Post published the article about terrorists uh, who uh, involved uh, in recent terrorist attacks in Paris. And uh, the main idea of this article was that uh, ISIS ideology uh, shaped a new type of jihadists, part terrorists and uh, part uh, gangsters. Uh, but uh, in case of Kazakhstan, uh, the, uh, this uh, phenomenon manifested itself uh, much earlier and uh, uh, before ISIS had emerged. And uh, uh, today, uh, I, uh, my research uh, will show that uh, this, uh, how important uh, to know about uh, the, uh, the merging uh, of gang culture and uh, uh, Salafi jihadism, jihadist ideology, uh, important in terms of uh, frame the uh, this issue uh, in terms of international organizations and uh, in terms of international uh, centers and the scholars. Uh, uh, let's uh, look at the background formation. Um, in 2011-2012, uh, Kazakhstan faced with the explosion of uh, violent extremism. Uh, and uh, on the course of one year, uh, there have been occurred 14 terrorist attacks uh, in which 70 people died. Uh, and uh, according to this information, um, about 300 people went to war in Syria and Iraq. And uh, more than uh, 500 people uh, now are sentencing, uh, are ser serving sentences in prison for extremism and terrorism. Uh, and uh, at first glance, uh, the cases of uh, violent extremism are typical uh, suicide bomb attacks, uh, attacks on ordinary people, and attacks on uh, police office, uh, officers. Uh, but uh, there is a, a very important feature. In some cases, uh, radical groups acted as a banal, banal criminal groups. Uh, they extorted money uh, from businessmen, they looted ordinary people, and they murdered the criminal authorities. And uh, uh, in 2012, uh, the first deputy of uh, general prosecutor uh, of the Republic of Kazakhstan uh, claimed that uh, the criminalization of followers of non-traditional religious groups is acquiring greater proportions. And uh, he was worried about uh, increasing connection between organized crime and uh, uh, Salafi groups in Kazakhstan. Uh, but uh, in spite of uh, urgency of these problems, there is a very little uh, research on that topic. And uh, uh, I formulated my question in the next way. Now, what is the relationship between crime and uh, violent extremism in Kazakhstan? Uh, briefly about field research. Uh, in 2013, uh, we conducted research uh, in four prisons in different regions of Kazakhstan. Uh, the project was organized uh, with a uh, partnership uh, of uh, General Prosecutor's Office and uh, thanks to uh, whom we got access in prisons. Uh, but um, in spite of uh, existing uh, permission, it wasn't easy to conduct interviews. Uh, and also we uh, visited uh, Kinkiak village. This village uh, became prominent after a cruel act of uh, Radical, uh, radicalism and extremism. Uh, and uh, uh, in this uh, next slide, you can see the photos of Kim Kiak. Uh, it's a village on the west side of the country, in the region. And uh, uh, in 2011, uh, there was a long firefight between uh, security forces and uh, local citizens who were claimed as uh, jihadists. And uh, in this battle, all of the nine insurgents were killed. Uh, one of my respondents, uh, he was a member of this group, and uh, uh, during interview, uh, he admitted that uh, he uh, 
spent his, most of his time on the street, uh, and uh, before adopting Islam, he led riotous life, uh, drinking alcohol and uh, taking drugs. Uh, and uh, uh, he was typical uh, representative of uh, street gang culture. Uh, he was unemployed. Uh, he uh, and his uh, world view was shaped under the strong influence of uh, crime culture. Uh, and uh, 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 this is a quote from the interview, his interview, and you can see that he had a, a sense of obligation to his brothers, and uh, uh, this was the reason why he decided to join this radical group when they claimed to uh, commit uh, um, jihad, act of jihadism against local police uh, officers. Uh, and uh, this is very similar to a specific code of honor which exists uh, among uh, banal criminal groups. Uh, so, uh, next slide. In the next slide, you can see the um, poster uh, of uh, local rapper <coughs> who, who wrote the song about uh, the diet uh, insurgents. And uh, uh, this song is a good illustration of merging street gang concepts with uh, jihadist ideology. And uh, in this song, uh, he creates a romantic image of uh, street toughs uh, who decided to uh, struggle with the system and uh, uh, to be uh, against the official, uh, officials. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to note uh, that in this song, he urged to drink in the memory of uh, diet people, drink alcohol, of course, and uh, uh, it's absolutely not uh, compatible with uh, literal Islam. Uh, this is a text from this song. Uh, and uh, uh, analyzing these uh, cases, I came to the question, uh, what is the mechanism of uh, transforming people from yes yesterday's hooligans into proponents of radical ideology. And uh, uh, in my research, uh, research, I use the model of Viktorovich, uh, who is a, a prominent uh, scholar in this field, and he uh, uh, emphasized the importance of frame alignment. Uh, and uh, uh, according to him, uh, radical ideology would be successfully adopted if it matches and resonates uh, with the culture of recruit, recruited people. Uh, and I argue that um, uh, Jihadist ideology uh, resonates with the gang culture through the uh, next uh, three elements. And first element uh, is uh, insiders against outsiders' identity. Uh, for hooligans, uh, the division between us and them uh, passes pass through, through streets, uh, district, or local group. And uh, in case of uh, jihadists, there is a strong separation between us Muslims and they uh, kufars or not, not believers. And uh, one, of the, my, one of my respondents, uh, he was convinced that uh, uh, Muslims in Afghanistan are struggling against uh, enemies. Uh, and uh, uh, he had a, a very uh, strong link with Muslims in Afghanistan and he wanted to Join and to fight against uh, to fight against United States, uh, and uh, it's interesting that uh, he grew uh, grew up in criminalized district of Aftabi region, and uh, he was engaged uh, in martial arts when in his childhood. Uh, so he was also the typical uh, representative of uh, street gang culture. Uh, and and the next parallel between uh, Salafi jihadism and uh, gang uh, culture uh, is a uh, uh, cult of uh, violence. And uh, uh, for both, uh, the violent struggle with others uh, is the essential element of their world view. Uh, and one of my respondents, he was a member of radical group in Almaty. Uh, he believed uh, that uh, Islam allows to take money from not believers if you share your luch with your brothers, and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, he, um, they uh, loot money uh, in names of uh, 
4G card. He saw that he uh, they uh, with money 4G card and uh, uh, he is one of these uh, guys. <laughs> and uh, he's uh, had uh, experience in prison, uh, but uh, before adopting Islam. And uh, a third uh, parallel between gang culture and street uh, and uh, Salafi jihadism uh, is uh, goes through self-organization and the collecting money system of collecting money uh, for both. Uh, in both cases, raising money uh, looked like a bottom-up system, and uh, people from uh, uh, our region. Uh, know about uh, grief, uh, it's a notion, it's a jargon, criminal jargon, which means that uh, part members of a criminal band uh, have to collect money for their brothers in prison. And uh, part of my respondents, they were accused of extre uh, financing extremism, and, uh, and they thought that their money uh, uh, go to their brothers in the, who are suffering, but uh, uh, in, real, uh, in reality, uh, the, this money uh, was used by terrorists in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, uh, so it also uh, shows that uh, there is a strong uh, connection between uh, uh, Salafi jihadism and the gang culture. Uh, and uh, I argue that uh, through these three elements, uh, Salafi jihadist ideology merged with the uh, gang subculture, and uh, uh, this eventually uh, uh, forms uh, the new phenomenon of criminalized radicalism. Uh, and uh, uh, three years ago, our government uh, launched a special uh, counter terrorism program. And uh, uh, I, I think that uh, the issue with this program uh, first, it is uh, the they target all of uh, group of society, but I offer to target focus uh, on criminalized use. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, their outreach activities uh, under this program oriented uh, to reinforce the true traditional Islam and to combat with non-traditional or wrong Islam. But uh, if to consider that the key uh, target of this program should be criminalized use, it's, it's, uh, it's clear that uh, this part of society used to live against the official system and against the official interpretation of uh, religion. And that's why uh, this uh, program uh, should be adjusted or uh, changed uh, uh, by uh, this knowledge. And uh, I offer to uh, abandon uh, the approach of uh, shooting sparrows uh, from the cannon and uh, to uh, focus uh, at risk group uh, who are marginalized and criminalized youth. And uh, I uh, sub um, offer to start a decriminalization program among Kazakh, uh, Kazakhstan uh, youth, Kazakhstani youth, and uh, start from the special research in one of the schools of uh, suburban areas of Aftobi region. Uh, thank you for attention. Uh, feel free to ask me, and I will be glad to ask, uh, answer your questions. Thank you very much.